Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Innal hamdalillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruh wa na'udzu billahi min shururi anfusina wa sayyiati a'malina may yahdihillahu fala mudilla la wa may yudlil fala hadiya la. Asyhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la syarika lah wa asyhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. All praise due to Allah, the creator of all things, the sender of all prophets, from Adam to Noah to Abraham to Moses to Jesus, and the last messenger of Allah to mankind, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and the revealer of all holy books, from the Torah, from the Suhu of Ibrahim, from Zabur, and also Injil, and lastly, the last testament, the Qur'an al-Karim, as a divine guidance for humanity. My respectful chairman and our honorable Dr. Muhammad Faiz as a managing uh, partner of PwC and all the organizing committee of PwC, Alhamdulillah, with the will of Allah Rabbil Alamin, we are able to be gathered tonight or this evening before iftar with the spirit of Ramadan and Mubarak. Now, as fellow Muslims, we know why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to fast. It's not to make our life difficult, to torture us without food, without drinks in the daytime. But we are still eating a lot at night, alhamdulillah. First round, iftar. After that, Maghrib dinner. After that, we have morai. Before we go to bed, we have supper again. Then we wake up for sahur again. So we are not eating less actually. Yeah, we are eating the same yeah, number of times. Only we change the timing from day to night. Now, let us look into what Quran said about Ramadan. If you look into the Quran as a divine guidance that was mentioned early, by Datu Muhammad Faiz, the Quran was revealed in the month of Ramadan, not only for Muslim. If any one of us feel the Quran only for Muslim, then I'm here to remind all of you that our thinking about that is wrong. Because Allah said, Shah Ramadan Allazi unzila fihil Quran Hudalin Nas. In the month of Ramadan, we revealed the Quran as a divine guidance for mankind, for everyone. Now, let us look in the ayat of Ramadan again. Allah begin by calling, O oh, you who believe, Ya ayuhallazina amanu. O oh, you who believe, Allah did not call just any Muslim. He addressed the believers. Why the believer is so important? Because the Prophet ﷺ is here to explain to us who are the believers. Every Muslim is not yet a believer. Every believer is a Muslim. It's just like every prophet is not a messenger. Every messenger is a prophet of Allah. From Muslim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want to upgrade us to the next level to be a believer. The Prophet said, the sign of a believers. The Prophet said, La iman liman la aman No one can claim that he or she is a believer if he has no amana. PWC, I believe, is a very important institution to the country where everything you have to look into the account seriously to make sure that everything is correct. Everything is being accounted properly. Now, that's why the Prophet said, La iman liman la amana tala. There is no iman without amana. And one of the amana is fasting. Allah said, O you who believe, I have made fast Ramadan, fasting of Ramadan as an obligation 
upon all of you. Like how this ritual of fasting have made by Allah as an obligation upon the early generation. Meaning fasting is not just only for Muslim. It was an obligation upon all prophets from Adam to Noah to Abraham to Moses to Jesus even to the Buddhists to the Hindus every religion remind their followers to fast and we know fasting is not just to abstain from food and drink and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran that was recited by the Qari Anyone who wants to be successful here, today, hereafter. Islam is not here to talk about your life here only, but also preparing everyone to go to the next life, to the hereafter. Now Allah said, indeed, whoever wants to be successful here and the hereafter, he or she must be a believer. Rule number one. When you are a believer, then the second verses came in reminding us A believer is a person who stay connected with the Creator, who have provided for all of us all the provision, the risk, the job that you are having now, the work that you are involved is also a risk from Allah. The friendship that you have developed among this company is part of the risk of Allah Rabbul Alameen. So Allah said, stay connected with Him. But in the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remind us, if you perform your prayer with khushu, meaning you must perform your prayer with knowledge, understanding, knowing the rukun, the wajibat, and the sunnah, then insha'Allah, you will feel the power of prayer. There is a power in the prayer. Like now you are using some rhyming sports suits called power. Now he also has power. You have a can drink called power drink. What is the power of salat? If you are connected to Allah Rabbul Alameen, then Allah promised us Inna salata tanha anil fahsha'i wal munkar The salah that you have performed, if it's been performed with khuchok full of understanding, with the right spirit, this salah is sure to protect you from anything that is bad and evil and the wrongdoing. That is the power of salah. And that's why when you look at the early generation to establish amana. To make sure that you can trust these people, your workers, your family members. To make sure that you can trust your loved ones. You must make sure that these people establish their prayer. They have a strong connection with Allah Almighty. When you are connected brothers and sisters, then inshallah, whether your boss is with you or not with you, you will carry out your duty with full of commitment. But when you don't have that connection, when your boss is around, MashaAllah, you're so active, so productive. No. But when the boss is gone, Alhamdulillah. Maybe you don't say that, but deep in your heart, you know. I'm just waiting for the boss to go. When the boss is up, as though now nobody is monitoring me. That is the problem when you are not connected with Allah. When you are connected with Allah, you know Allah is all-seeing, all-knowing, all-hearing. And that's why whoever stay connected with Allah, Allah said, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنِ اللَّقْوِ مُخْرِدُونَ Then we will stay away from doing things or saying things that do not benefit you anymore. In our job, a job, an assignment is an amana. It's been entrusted to all of us to fulfill our amana so that we give the best. But when you engage in things that do not benefit you, 
discussing about things that do not benefit you and your job. And you do a lot of activities that do not benefit you, all of us will become a loser. The company will also lose. So you need to be productive. Ramadan, I show you how productive is Ramadan. Ramadan, there is no lunch. Do we have lunch then for Ramadan, brother and sister? Or somebody still go for lunch? You know, some coffee shop, you know, they, they do offer special area for Ramadan people. Maybe. Wallahu a'lam. My mother was not yet a Muslim before, but Alhamdulillah, she became a Muslim before she passed away. When I became a Muslim in 1968, the same year I passed, my mother said, you don't torture yourself. You don't eat, I can understand. But I'm preparing drink for you. I said, mother, don't worry. I'm going to eat, I'm going to drink. Just half hour, after half an hour. It's near to Maghrib. When I visit my mom, she was preparing some drink for me. I said, no, not now. He said, I'm going to show you there's a lot of Muslim drinking and eating. I said, yes. I mean, they're not Muslim. Muslims don't do that. But you can see maybe some Indian, some Malay, or some Chinese who are not yet Muslim, they will eat and they will drink. But when they are Muslim, I believe they will not eat and drink. So lunchtime, you are not eating. Do you agree with me, sisters? But sister, you can eat. Sometimes the sisters give can eat in Ramadan. Because when you can't pray, that means you can break your fast. But you are not supposed to do it openly. Because then people may got the wrong message. And then they will gossip about you. And that's not good. Now, when you are not eating, should you be more productive to your client? To show them in Ramadan... We are here to serve our customer. Even lunchtime people say, now it's lunchtime. We are here to serve you. I think PwC have this spirit. Dato, do you agree with me, inshallah? Yeah, they should have. But if you always, lunchtime, you disappear. Before lunchtime, you disappear. When you go, surau. For what? Surau is for you to perform parudu prayer. Sunnah prayer compared with your job. Your job is wajib. It's an amana. And the Prophet did say, Inna Allah la yakbalu tatawa'a hatta tu'addi farida. Allah will not accept any optional deeds when the fard is not being taken care of. You are not supposed to even take a leave. I want to go to surah. What doha? What doha? This job is wajib. Unless your boss said, no problem. If in the company they allow you Doha prayer time, then you can go Doha, no problem. You cannot just disappear and then where is she? Musalla. What is she doing? 20 minutes, Doha. If you pray and you ask, may Allah bless this company, PWC, maybe your boss will say, okay, go and pray more. But neither you pray for the company. You are thinking of yourself. Islam is not here. To teach us to be selfish, you must feel for others. This is how productive Ramadan is. But today Ramadan is different, you know. Before our, our working hour is of oh, Ramadan, Ramadan, I've got to go home early. Never mind, never mind, no problem. But anyhow, brother and sister, at the end of the ayah, Allah said, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِأَمَانَاتِهِمْ the believer is a person who is very trustworthy. Anything you entrust them, you don't have to worry. They are sure to make sure you feel comfortable. If you say, I will get this done for you today, inshallah, it will be done. Because Muslims who are connected with Allah, who are believers, they are people that you can trust. 100%. Because they will never betray you. Because they knew that by betraying you, they have, I would say, I mean, they have destroyed their own iman. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said again, 
walazina hum ala salawatihim yuhafizun a person who fasts in the month of ramadan with the right spirit guided by iman and there's a hadith quoted by datuk just now that the prophet said man sama ramadan imanan wa ihtisaban ghufira lahu ma taqaddam min zambi now the prophet is not here to teach you just fast stay away from food drink and having relationship with your halal husband and wife in the daytime you can of course you are not supposed to have any red but at night allah give you the right to all that allah have provided for you again now what fasting one from us is that at the end of the day you become a muttaqin that's why the ayah of fasting whoever fast in the month of ramadan la allakum tattaqun that is the reason it's not to make you cut down your your cholesterol no maybe you are not eating enough now you are very hungry they tend by a lot of people having more cholesterol in ramadan than outside ramadan no our canadian partner who are not yet muslim they love ramadan they say ramadan is the man that all the believer always give and give and keep on giving they don't go for lunch the money that they spend for lunch they donate it to help the poor and the needy that mean ramadan create a lot of blessing there's a lot of blessing in ramadan now the prophet said whoever fast in the month of ramadan guided by the right iman the right intention insha allah at the end of your fasting day allah will forgive your past sins for one year you have committed sin by fasting for the right intention guided by the right iman belief allah forgive your sins that mean you become like a reborn again with the right spirit with the right intention yeah with the right mindset inshallah you become a better person after ramadan i'm going to be very brief because time is yeah, very short for me until 7:15 i may have 10 more minutes to share with you now i like to go back to the objective of fasting fasting at the end of the day should make us a muttaqin to the next level from muslim to mukmin to muttaqin that is why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said la allakum tattaqun what is muttaqin muttaqin derived from the root word taqwa what is taqwa generally in every masjid today is jumat all the brothers who attend friday prayer will always hear the recitation of the iman ittaqillah haqqa tuqati o you who believe be faithful to allah have taqwa to allah now i want all the brother and sister please pay attention to what i'm going to share with you about the true meaning of taqwa taqwa is divided into three categories number one, a person who said i am a muttaqin is a person ayyuta'a fala yusaw is a person who will always obey the command of allah obeys their bosses anything that people want you to do your leader want you to do you must obey your father your mother your husband want you to do something you must learn how to obey respond to the command you are not supposed to disobey when you disobey you cannot claim that you are muttaqin a muttaqin and you ta'a fala yuqsa they will always submit now wa ta'na we hear we listen and we obey if pwc have a policy and the boss is telling you what to do and if the worker was said we hear and we obey finish no more problem 
Number two is Al-Yuskar Fala Al-Yuskar Fala yun sa Takwa means you must remember what you must do as a Muslim as a worker employee what is your commitment you must take up some responsibility you must remember that wherever you go you are a Muslim a Muslim is a person who always bring peace a mu'min is a person who always fulfill their commitment wala yun sa don't forget Allah so that you will not forget your responsibility when you forget Allah brother and sister Allah said wala takunu kallazina nas Allah fa ansahum anfusahum don't be like those who forget Allah then Allah make you forget yourself a lot of Muslim today they only remember Allah in the masjid outside the masjid they forget Allah they may remember Allah more when they go to Makkah to Medina after there is Jiddah they forget Allah and there is KLIA further and further as though as though that Allah is only in a place but Allah see us and he monitor every movement that we are doing in this land cannot escape from the monitoring of Allah Rabbul Alamin give you one last example on this remembering Allah if a person remember that Allah is watching you you know one thing that can destroy yourself your family and the country is corruption corruption is a cancer is a disease but sometimes we can easily be corrupted now corruption is always talking about what not about what is on the table what is under the table i'm not worrying about the paperwork you can put all the paper on my table but how about something under the table when you do anything underground you know something is not right now why people do that? Because they thought that Allah do not see them. Anything go under the table, that means it's okay. No, that is worse. Because you are bringing haram income to your family. Feeding them with food that is haram. Now it caused all our prayer to be rejected. The Prophet said, why our prayer is not being responded by Allah is because we eat haram food. We drink haram drink. We wear haram garment. So a companion said to the Prophet, We are eating halal meat. Beef, mutton, chicken is halal. How can you say haram? We are drinking milk, honey, water is halal. We are breaking fast with all halal food. All is halal here. We are dressing ourselves, covering ourselves with the right garment, closing our aura. Covering our aura is halal. But the Prophet said, I do not mean about the food but if your income is haram you buy Kentucky fried chicken now the Kentucky fried chicken become corrupted because that money is from the corrupted money from corruption example if you steal something and you buy McDonald's that is called McDonald's haram because it's like you are you stole the food you're stealing the food from mcdonald that is what the prophet said your income must be halal then everything will be halal inshallah lastly the meaning of taqwa is meaning you must learn how to be thankful be grateful that you have a job a halal job a profession that you are serving the country companies is a, a good thing that you are doing for every company who need yeah, you to come in to look into to look into their, their account so you must be thankful a person who are thankful and grateful is a person who always said to anybody who do good thing for them thank you any of your client come to you thank you these two powerful words thank you and if you have done something wrong what should you say brother and sister if you have done something wrong what should we say 
Sorry. But sorry is S-O-R-R-Y. So difficult to say. Because sorry is so heavy. Like lorry, you know, L-O-R-R-Y. Lorry is a heavy vehicle. To say sorry, astaghfirullah. No, 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 no. I'm right. There's nothing wrong to say sorry. Powerful word. Learn this word is a very powerful. Sorry if you are wrong. And you say thank you. Jazakallah when you are right. So may Allah bless us brother and sister. Like I was being signaled by the MC. Then five minutes more. That means five minutes have end. So before I end. On behalf of Al-Qadim my organization. Meaning serving mankind. We are here to serve everybody who need our help. And we are here to share with our brothers and sisters who are not yet Muslim. To understand the beauty of this religion, Islam. I personally want to thank uh, if Mr. Uh, Sidaran Nair, managing partner of PwC is here. Datuk Muhammad Faiz as managing, managing partner of PwC. Members of the executive uh, board and partner and partners of the firm. So once again, we like to thank all of you and may Allah bless us, may Allah guide us, may Allah protect us, and may Allah accept all our prayer and forgive all our sins. Amin. Ya Rabbil Alamin. Wa bilahi tawfiqi wa laqir da'wana. Wa alhamdulillah bil alamin. Lastly, brothers and sisters, when you want to breakfast, don't forget to use your right hand, right hand. Eat right hand, drink also right hand. Be the righteous people. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.